Gary's asking, what's the easiest way to really start challenging the way we think day to day? Is there some certain habits that you form or certain things where you, you almost like are, are looking for um, a, a signal that maybe you're, you're falling into these negative mental models? Um, and, and how do you basically improve the way you think over time? Yeah. So I think like what we want to do is if you want to get better at thinking, hang around people who think better than you do. And that's super uncomfortable. Uh, most of us want to hang around people who think the same as us or won't challenge us. And you want to hang around people who challenge your thinking. You want to expose your thinking to them. You want to show your thought process and open it up to evaluation. And you sort of like want to get that feedback. And that's not comfortable. And you know, often those people, to be honest with you, they're not popular. So you have to think about a whole bunch of different social dynamics um, with that crowd. Um, and often the best thinking is not popular thinking because ultimately what you're looking for to gain an edge or get leverage is sort of like advantageous divergence, right? So you want to be right and against the crowd and that's where the payoffs and leverage comes from. If you're right with the crowd, well, you're probably not going to win a very big payoff, but if you're right and the crowd is wrong, those are the moments where you can um, rapidly accelerate your business or you can sort of like rapidly scale your investments or anything like that. And I think those are the situations you're trying to find, but the best way to find those is not to hang around people who think like you. It's to hang around people who think differently than you and think better than you and people who uh, you respect, but they're often, they're not popular. And you know, those opinions aren't popular and you have to subject yourself to be willing to not be popular. And if you think of like so much what we do at organizations, we just go along to get along. And I think that it's important that we um, evaluate us and where we want to go with that, right? And it's not always, um, it's not always the the case that we, we actually want the best decisions. Sometimes we just want to go with the crowd. We don't want to sort of like die on this sword or we want to go along to get along because we're effectively unconsciously horse trading. Like there's so much implicit things in organizations about uh, the, the hippo in the room getting to make the decision. The hippo is the highest paid person in the room. And, you know, their opinion carries the day because the implicit assumption in that is like one day, if I follow the rules and I play by the rules, I'll be the hippo too. And, you know, I don't want to rock the boat because I want to be that person. I aspire to be that person. And I think that you got to shake yourself of all of that. And often that comes from social cohesion and group dynamics. And those are important things to consider, but you really need to deep dive um, on what it is you want. And if you want to think better, it's probably not going to be super popular and you're going to want to hang out with people who um, challenge you and it, uh, you want to expose your thinking to them. And they're probably not going to be the, the highest paid people in the room and they're probably not going to be super popular, but you'll get better quickly. Yeah, I know you've, you've written about how you don't advise people to read all the books that everyone's reading. Because if you read what everyone else is reading, you think the way everyone else is thinking and, and you can't yeah. that. You, you got to bring an edge, right? Like it, you don't want the common wisdom, right? You want to get into things that other people don't see or don't know. So you want to understand the common wisdom, but often you can get that through conversations or meetings at work. Um, if you think of like how meetings are run at work, so often what happens at meetings is like everybody comes in and then they have the signal problem where they signal that they've read the briefing note or they signal that they've, they've done the work for the meeting, but they're all basically paraphrasing the exact same thing. They're just saying it in different language. So the meeting's really ineffective in the sense of like surfacing new information. What's happening is people are just signaling to other people that I did the work and I read it, so I'm going to chime in with my thoughts, but you're not surfacing anything. One way to get out of that, if you're looking for a very practical uh, tip to avoid that, is to ask people what they know about the problem that nobody else knows about the problem. And that totally changes what people talk about in meetings. And it changes the value of signaling from signaling um, what other people are talking about or what other people already know to um, the signaling value comes from, I have more insight into this problem um, than other people. In order to expand your mind, you need to be around people who think differently than you. Um, how do you actually recommend people access these individuals who think differently? So, so Wade is asking, how can someone like me meet someone who thinks differently? Like, how do I find these other crowds or individuals who maybe are overlooked? Um, because we tend to naturally surround ourselves with people that think and act like us. Yeah. So, I mean, there's never been a better time alive to do that than right now, right? Because you have access to Twitter, 
uh, and other social media where you can follow, literally follow almost anybody in the world. And so what you're looking for when you're following people is people you attended disagree with. Uh, they might offer, but you respect, right? So people who articulate how they're thinking, why they're thinking things, but don't offer an opinion that's different than yours. And people that surprise you, like that, that surprises me. I don't agree with that worldview because it, it doesn't compute with what I think the world looks like. And those are moments that most of us gloss over, but those are the moments you want to dive into if you're trying to think better. And I think that it's really important that you explore those and uh, you can follow crazy you know, I, I wouldn't follow like just if you're left wing, follow right wing people, or if you're right wing, follow left wing people. That's not enough. That's not thoughtful. And that's sort of like convincing yourself you're doing the work without doing the work. You want to find somebody who thinks differently than you, but you respect the way they think and they're articulating the reasons they think and they're opening up their thought process to you because that's how you're going to learn. And at work, you want to do the same thing, right? It's not enough to just find somebody above you in the organization. I mean, that's a lazy approach to sort of like getting better. It might actually be effective for getting a promotion, um, but it's a lazy approach to thinking better. You want to find the people closest to the problem and you want to start developing your associative memory. You don't want to develop your direct memory. And so if you think of computers, computers use direct memory. You need an exact match to see the problem. You, our brains, use associative memory. We, we're intuitive machines. We match imperfectly. And you want to start intelligently preparing to build up that intuitive memory. And one of the ways that you intelligently prepare your associative memory is you start going to the root of the problem, right? So you start talking to the people closest to the problem. And what you're trying to do is you're trying to vacuum up these details of the problem. So you're trying to vacuum up not what the person thinks you should do or what the solution is, but you're trying to vacuum up their experience into your brain so you can start making connections that other people can't make. And um, that's sort of like how you, it's like, I mean, there's, it's a journey. There's no, there's no end to it. There's no destination, but that's the, the slog of like how we learn to think better.